How's it going, Lucy fans? Welcome to my Lucifer Season 5 Part 2 breakdown, ending explained, and just kind of overall breakdown on the biggest beats of this second half of the season. What I thought of some of those really big moments, some Easter eggy moments that were referenced in this, for example, when they took a jab at their old home of Fox, which definitely things like that made me laugh quite a bit. And then at the end, we're gonna get into the big finale discussion kind of breakdown and explained and how I can see that moving forward. But I also do wanna do a predictions video because I feel like that can be a whole video in of itself. But other than that, let's just jump straight into episode nine's family dinner biggest moments and what I thought of that and I am dying to hear your thoughts on everything I'm about to say down in the comments below and just chuck in your favorite moments and what you thought of the biggest moments in Lucifer season 5 part 2. Oh yeah, and by the way, this video should be timestamped. So if you want to, I guess, get into specific thoughts on what I thought on certain things in this, th there should be chapters and timestamps on the video because if you couldn't tell already, talking about eight episodes in one video is kind of a hard thing to do and make it short. So we're going to be nerding out about Lucifer for a minute. So episode nine, family dinner, obviously God, dear old dad interrupts the little angel sibling squabble that goes on. But the main thing I wanted to talk about right off the bat is something that we're going to revisit a few times throughout this video because I really want your input on it. And it's not a massive problem. It's just something that I feel like wasn't really fleshed out or as I said in my spoiler free review, I feel like they kind of relied upon this too much. Obviously this is subjective. Some people don't care about this more than other people. I just felt like, yeah, it was just something that was relied upon and there was a lot of gaps left. So for example, when we had lines from Lucifer saying things like, for someone who's supposed to be omniscient, he's behind every bad thing that ever happened to me. And it's amazing that you never actually see that and apparently never will. When obviously talking about Michael or there was lines such as, what are you going to say to her? Something romantic from God? And then Lucifer <laughs> replies back, what do you care? Why do you ask? Aren't you all knowing? So I feel like with this season and God, as much as I really enjoyed him and I'm not trying to start this video off by raining on a parade. It's just something I wanted to spark a discussion with you guys about is I felt like during this half or the second half of season five, it was like, well, is God omniscient? Uh, is he all knowing or isn't he? Because I felt like there was a few contradictions there, but then later on, they definitely do play with the viewer by posing something just before he leaves with the goddess of all creation. There's more lines from Lucifer saying, you know, he's hardly said a word to us our entire lives, brother, and now he suddenly wants to catch up. And even Amenadiel <laughs> admits to calling God a bit of an ass. So I do like, once again, across the span of all of these episodes, right up until when God leaves, it's about both of them coming to terms with how they could have done better, including the big man himself. Also, shout out to Lionel Luther appearing in this episode. He was the main guy in the case, or like, you know, for this episode who kind of turned out to be the guy with the gun. If any of you have watched Smallville, you should know this, especially if you subscribe to this channel. And of course, the family dinner itself was just hilarious. Imagine an actual meal cooked by God. I mean, holy crap. Once again, raising very good points about God when he says, it's okay, son, and Lucifer's just like, is it? Is it okay? Think about what Amenadiel has been through the past couple of years. All of that anguish thinking had fallen from your favor. Couldn't you have just told us that's how we all work instead of letting your favorite son think that he was being brutally punished, thinking he was a failure? Once again, all relevant. That's what I feel like. It's very relevant. Right up until that moment, as I teased earlier, when Lucifer asked that question many episodes later when God is leaving to go to the goddesses universe. Wait, so was this all a part of your plan? And God just looks at him and chuckles. So it's kind of an answer, but I feel like a little bit of a cop out, but also a little bit of a teasy answer. It's like, so, so, so what? What? There were questions raised by Lucifer that made me say out loud, thank you, like why doesn't hell need a warden anymore? But they were yet again questions raised without answers other than it's just God being mysterious. So it's like, that's what I'm trying to hit the nail on the head here. Maybe it is just as Lucifer said, we're, it's also the audience as well. We're all being tortured, those of us who kind of care the extra level about these questions that we want answers to throughout the series, all in the name of our father's mysterious ways. And I, I guess that's the way I'm going to have to accept that. And to be fair to the show, they did try and inject some reasoning behind it, even though it still does fall down to I'm God and I'm mysterious. For example, in episode 10, when God says during therapy with Lucifer, it's impossible to make him happy. If I give my opinion, I'm controlling. If I stand back, 
and let him make his own decisions. I'm the mysterious father with his mysterious ways. And it's like, well, okay, I get what you're trying to give him the line of there, but I still felt like, even though there was some effort to address this, I still feel like you wouldn't be completely silent for millennia and let all of the events unfold that have unfolded. But regardless, um, the, the root of this is I still like, even if that is an actual excuse, how that does hum humanize Celestials. That was the big message in how Celestials aren't all that different from the dynamic of humans. Family Dinner Episode 9, the first episode, just did such a good job at laying down the land of the season as it should. If all the apples are bad, then maybe it's the tree. That's the problem, so setting the seeds that will be sown throughout, the, you know, the continued episodes, exploring God and his relationship with his children, if you will. We learned that Charlie is indeed mortal, something we already kind of knew, but it was interesting seeing Amenadiel deal with that, even, like, almost begging to swap places with his son. And as I said, like, the case in this episode and the cases throughout, I, I would say, the, the main God episodes were very transparent in, in terms of the thematic parallels that they were trying to draw between God, for example. All I wanted to do was to burn that toxic place down. Everything that was broken in him was because of it, because of you paralleling the rebellion and Lucifer and how he viewed. So yeah, I, it's not that I mind that. I just felt like it was sometimes a bit two on the nose, but it's it's not a complaint, really. It's just something I thought I'd bring up. And then by the end of this episode, we had Lucifer saying that thing in the trailer where everyone was hoping it'd be cut in a different way, but actually, no, they did they did stick to it with him saying that because he believes God is incapable of love and he is his father's son, that means he doesn't think that he is capable of love. Even though it was the kind of thing at the end of the episode where we're all just like, well, we know he's going to be fine, but we're going to have to see this out. Which brings us to episode... 10. Bloody Celestial Karaoke Jam. Now, Lucifer singing uh, Wicked at the beginning was absolutely great, and this whole episode in of itself was really, really funny, and I'm glad that they still kept it very relevant to the story, because I'm not, like, a massive fan of musicals, especially when you normally have, kind of, network TV doing it, for example, like, I'm not a big fan of, like, the CW musicals on those shows, but when it comes to Lucifer, and, and that's not to say I don't enjoy musicals, by the way, it's just... Sometimes when they pull it off, you, you know what I'm saying, it doesn't always get pulled off. But I feel like even though not every song was absolutely stellar, I think with, even though a lot of them were, by the way, the, the cast of this show and the way the show doesn't take itself mega seriously at times, it, it this only suits it to a T. And the cast just make you really, really enjoy it. So other things that were present in this episode were the first time that Chloe met God, and I loved seeing her call him out respectfully that is something that she she had to keep including there and this is what i meant about god once again again very briefly revisiting what i was talking about earlier with the whole it's just because it's god thing this is a moment where the gift gets brought up and chloe's just like speaking of that i would like to talk and it gets interrupted as she wanted to talk about it and maybe it was left best left for another time but it was never brought up again. Now, I, I it's not a massive problem. I, I'm really not trying to make it out to be a massive problem. But once again, it felt like whenever it came to asking big questions that could have been explored, it's kind of like, but hey, God works in mysterious ways. Do you know what I mean? That, that It's just a reoccurring thing. And that's, I think, inherent. Something that comes with bringing in a character as big as God who could arguably answer any question that you would have that has always been a little bit ambiguous on the show. So I guess I'm trying to say here is when we were maybe expecting some big answers for certain things, we didn't really get all of them for every single question that is raised uh, throughout the past seasons. So throughout this episode, Lucifer and God are trying to work on their relationship, and this is when good old Daniel Espinosa <laughs> meets God. This was just brilliant. Kevin Alejandro, I always sing his praises. Not only is he a fantastic actor, but Dan has become, unknowingly to me throughout the seasons, one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character. It's just insane to think of Dan being with God's wife when he was just like, I believe you've met my wife. And he just kind of straightens Dan's jacket, and he was just like, be seeing you. Or not. We also had any Gothamites in here. Drew Powell, who played Butch Gilzine, or also uh, Grundy on Gotham. I'm sure all of you, if you watched Gotham, would have recognized him. And the big takeaway from this episode at the end was when they just started singing I, I Dreamed a Dream uh, between God and Lucifer, obviously, and it was revealed when he started crying in, in this very vulnerable thing. This was, like, really cool. You see God that vulnerable, and he says to Lucifer that he may 
be losing control of his powers, which leads us into episode 11, Resting Devil Face. Now, one of the really cool things about this episode, for all of those Lucy fans who wanted to see more Trixie, this episode definitely contained more Trixie. And we also had Dan apologizing to God about the whole God's wife situation. And he literally murders him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is what I mean about the show not taking itself mega seriously, but at the same time, I, I love it. Do you know what I mean? It it God can just kill you, explode you, and then reverse time as if none of it ever happened. But the thing that I felt was kind of cruel about it is, technically speaking, Daniel, Dan, Dan Espinosa had the memory of that afterwards. He knew what it was like to be obliterated and put back. That, that would cause a PTSD memory if, if ever something could. And so I feel sorry for Dan this season. Dan, ah, oh, Dan. Another huge part about episode 11, of course, is God becoming human or making himself human. And he forgets where his powers are. So yet again, as I said, this will be a reoccurring thing with the mysterious ways, just because it's relevant to so many different story beats, but it's my conversation kind of evolves into different sectors, I would say. So with this, yet again, referring to that later on episode, I can't remember off the top of my head, but where he leaves with obviously the goddess of all creation, with Lucifer raising that question, was this all just a part of the plan kind of thing? I mean, so if you take that and you entertain that line into account, did he lose his powers or should I say forget where he mis misplaced his powers? Even though Michael was behind all of that, which we'll talk about a little bit later, was he aware of all of it? That's what that chuckle, it's like annoying. Uh, it, obviously it's, it's very deliberate, but now it has me looking back at this season say, thinking, did he actually forget where he placed his powers? Or was it all a part of his plan as he chuckled and went through to his wife's universe? It's triggering me. I need to know. I need to know these answers. Because then you think if, if it was or wasn't a part of his plan, was God really n as naive and silly as he came across at, at, at times in this series? For example, with the whole sting, I would argue that was pretty stupid. Like seriously, like really stupid of God. And, and it felt like too stupid. You know what I mean? And this is meant to be this the omniscient God that we're talking about, despite being human in this episode. Obviously, like I have to be fair, he was meant to be human. But still, Lucifer's question before he left, because he chuckled at the end, I need to know that answer. Was this all a part of God's plan when they were on the sting, knowing he'd be vulnerable and he would force these situations? It's, we will never know. But I'm still going to keep being wound up about it till I maybe eventually find out. I don't know. In this episode as well, we finally had a moment I was really anticipating. And it's a very good scene still. And this was when God met Ella. But I have to admit, I still wanted so much more from this scene. For example, I wish Ella found out, but I have a feeling since we're getting another season that it still might be benched for her finding out about the whole celestial goings on until then. So I don't have a problem with this at all. Plus it was a very, very sweet scene. And I just realized I'm getting confused between the first time Ella met God and end the time he visited her in the office but I, I guess I can just wrap that all into one here I overall loved it, it, it she needed that boost uh, God himself was actually there and obviously she was being kind of meta there saying well if you're Lucifer's dad that would make you the big guy kind of thing and she, you know the, the darker the darkness the, the brighter the light and he can see her light all the way from heaven so you know that it was very nice I really hope but I can almost see it happening that Ella by the end of this series, still won't know. She's like the one human that the audience wants to find out, most of all, I think. I know people really want Trixie to find out and whatnot, but she still might not be the one to ever find out, even though she's the most religious. But we're gonna have to wait and see. We've still got another season, so. We also got nice moments between God and Trixie. We had Maze who couldn't bring herself to kill God. And as I said in my trailer breakdown, it seems that God was holding baby Charlie's rattle thing. And I was like, what is, what is going on with that? I don't think I called that the powers were in that, but there was something going on with that little baby toy. And that is after all, where he stored his powers. And also uh, when it comes to the point of being imbued with God's powers and how it can go into an object, I wanna raise this later when it comes to talking about Lucifer ascending to Godhood or even Michael at that point. How do they get the power? Now let's talk about Maze being perfect just the way she is and that she can grow a soul. So Demon self-actualizes as well and obviously God self-actualizes and we, 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 we've we kind of sort of spoke about that even though the revelation hadn't quite happened at this point in the episode with finding out that Michael set the seeds, but Maze. So how do I feel about that? 
I think it's a cool twist. When it comes to Maze getting a soul, I think we're all racking our brains in terms of like, how can God give it to her if Lucifer becomes God before this season came out? Is he just gonna give her one? If you think about it, if it really went that route, that would have been kind of too simple. Oh, Maze, I'm God now, have a soul. So I think it's quite nice that with all of that in mind that Maze can self, any celestial or kind of otherworldly being self actualizes. And we do in real life as well. That's something I like about how even God can as well. For example, we manifest and self actualize stress to the point of where you can get proper conditions. I mean, I've experienced that. It's, 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 it's mad. And, and so I like how they can really put that twist in to, you know, when it comes to things like this with the lore of the story. I'm really, really interested in all of that. The only thing that made me a little bit confused, a little bit, I mean, I could be just really having a big oversight right now. And I know that technically God created everything, so I suppose the argument should just end right there or the debate that I'm raising, but wasn't this specifically Lilith, the mother of all demons? Because Maze quote unquote said, I think you messed up when you made demons, when you made me. I think you made a mistake and you don't want to admit it. But did God really create demons? Like Lilith was the creator of the demons. She gave birth to all of but then like Lucifer had something to put. I suppose I'm gonna shut up because it all goes back to God at the end of the day. And then the episode kind of just leads off with that announcement that we saw in the trailer that maybe it's time for him to retire and he's been slipping for a while, which leads us on to a little bit of a breather, I suppose. Episode 12. Daniel Espinosa naked and afraid. And this episode was just absolutely fan freaking tastic. I mean, I honestly thought it was going to be a quite a big filler episode, but in the best way, if you know what I mean. They made the story relevant to the main plot in this while having a great time with Dan, especially considering what happens to him is bad, but I will get into that. I've got so much to talk about and theorize about, especially when talking even about Dan in next season. It was just such a good time to the point of ultimately where I felt so sorry for him. Each and everything evolved into another crazy thing. I love how the twist, it was such a good twist because I thought it was getting to the point of being so ludicrous with how this show doesn't take itself too seriously to the point where you had his acting buddies getting involved and how they were getting shot. But I have to admit, in that moment, I was kind of like, wait, are they really having innocent actor buddies get shot? Like, this is this is a bloodbath. Is there going to be a crime scene at Lux now? But it was all just loose for getting revenge. A very thoroughly entertaining episode. Kevin Alejandro, what more can I say? Absolutely fantastic. And it was great that he got a fantastic, funny episode in the season he bit the dust in. But as I said, I have more to say about his death then maybe some people may be considering. And I love how also, you know, not only did Lucifer include many Easter eggs from their previous adventures, but it also cost him five mil <laughs> to pull all of this off. Right now, episode 13, a little harmless stalking. Now this episode obviously gave a lot more to Linda, who's been stalking her daughter, if, if you will, I guess wanting to check in on her, but through this finds out that she got involved in some shady, shady stuff. We also had Lucifer and Amenadiel really now taking into consideration God's retirement and Amenadiel initially takes it upon himself to, you know, maybe be the next god. And Lucifer feels like he just needs to, in this episode, do more. So that's how the whole Chloe and uh, Lucifer thing takes the next step with, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna think too much. We are together. And that makes a very happy Chloe. And in this episode as well, Eve returned. And I think we saw more of Eve than what I thought we were gonna see. Because I suppose, obviously, she's very relevant to Maze's journey. So she was in it quite a bit from when she was you know, first introduced. She went to go and find herself and became a bounty hunter and kind of realized she just really wanted to see Maze. And she ends up getting shot. And, and this didn't feel so dramatic to me, to be honest. It was a bit too, oh my God, if you know what I mean for me. I felt like it was a bit too, like, I mean, we knew she, she was going to be fine. Regardless though, this opens up a fear for Maze that she's never felt due to her growing soul. And Eve refuses to wear Lucifer's ring because it's quite cool how that would have given immortality to Eve if she wanted it, but she wanted to grow old and die and, you know, because mortality is a gift. And I have to admit, in these moments, I'm, I'm, get, I'm guessing maybe it got fans and myself, for example, thinking, what well, is this a way that Chloe could live forever? But I've still never fully subscribed to those ideas, even when speculating before the season released, because what, is Chloe really going to be immortal and just outlive her daughter and things like that or people when they say that Chloe and Lucifer rule over heaven or hell it's just like don't forget that she has a daughter in school is is all of that really gonna go out the window so when 
thinking about end game speculations, I feel like we always have to take into account that like she's got responsibilities on Earth, like Trixie. By the end of this episode, after Amenadil realizes that maybe being God isn't for him and how he doesn't really want anything to change, this is when Lucifer takes it upon himself. We finally get that trailer moment. I'm going to be God, which leads us to episode 14, Nothing Lasts Forever. Now, obviously, it starts off with Chloe trying to wrap her mind around Lucifer and her boyfriend is might be the god of all creation, which, you know, <laughs> obviously is something you need to explore. Can you imagine? And Lucifer is getting grand ideas of being in charge, like war eradicated, world hunger, satiated, and hangovers. Obviously, we're talking about Lucifer here. And yet again, I told you this would keep coming back. They rub in the uh, omnipresent uh, or om omniscient kind of um, aspect to all of this. Because Lucifer literally says that he will be omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, all of the omnis. And he literally even then went on to even you know rub it in even more by saying, I'll be there for you whenever or whenever you need me. I'll know exactly what you're thinking, which is obviously worrying when it comes to a relationship. But just the mere fact that he's aware you do get this and he is very aware that that is a thing with godhood. It just kind of still basically brings up the theory of, well, God, this whole time, everything that happened, him acting stupid, this, that, and the other, left, right, and center, he was a aware of everything. I don't know. Still want to just keep throwing that in the mix whenever it pops up. And then, in this episode, God was hosting a barbecue for angels, which was brilliant because we actually got to see some angels for the very, very first time. For example, we see Gabriel, we see Zadkiel, who is the angel of righteousness, so immediately spits at the floor when seeing the fallen angel, Lucifer, and they're, they're, they're it was just moments uh, that just basically almost made me piss myself <laughs> laughing when it came to hand job hand, <laughs> hand job a deal yeah like no, ha hand job a deal hand job a deal of course there's a angel called hand <laughs> the most handsome one of them all <laughs> I can't get over it. Hand job at the L. <laughs> Obviously, some angels, or most of them, to be honest, don't want to support the fallen one. Ultimately, it's father's choice, though, and this kickstarts Lucifer's plans for making a retirement plan for his dad. I also want to mention that they even chuck in the possibility. It was just a very brief teaser that maybe Maze could go to heaven now when speculating about Eve dying and being in heaven. Now that if a demon has a soul, then, yeah, technically speaking, if you don't have guilt, then a demon could kind of bypass hell and go to heaven. We also have Chloe's mum, which introduced a double-decker date with God. Again, this is what I mean. The, the content for this season is so rich in of itself. The season writes itself because God being on Earth, there's so many funny and interesting things you can do. Every episode was just so thoroughly entertaining with every little facet that we kept getting into. We also had the revelation of learning that Michael did indeed plant the seeds for God losing control of his powers. Just like how he's orchestrated Lucifer's actions ever since the apple in the garden. Obviously, Lucifer did those actions himself, but he was completely manipulated by that little scumbag Michael to the point of where he has also been influencing the big man himself. But once again, I want to raise, is he aware of all of this? Just as I said, if he was leaving and he chuckled and, you know, when it, was this all a part of your plan, was he aware that Michael was doing all of this? I need to know, <laughs> like, because if so, all of this he just let happen to kind of play through the fact that it had to happen to get to where they were ending up. I don't know. This is where it's like trying to understand like deadly serious, the, the, the logic of God. You know, that, that that's where things get trippy. God goes on to say that Michael first noticed the problem a few months ago and the more they talked about it, the more he realized he was losing control of his power. So, you know, if that is the case and if it isn't a part of the plan, then he was actually self-actualizing and God can self-actualize. But if it was a part of the plan, just like the chuckle he did before going into the goddess's universe, then he wasn't losing his... Then he doesn't self-actualize and he was just doing it all... Do you see what I mean? How it actually, if you look back at it, it affects so many different things and we don't really know which way it is. Sometime after this, Lucifer does indeed raise that even though Hell no longer needs a warden, it deserves one. We've already spoke about that. It just doesn't need a warden because, uh, but it does deserve one, and that is Mazaqueen. So a lot of theories kind of panned out there. We didn't see it, like, properly, like, happen. It's not like she was chilling on the throne of hell, um, and we didn't even see, you know, anything like that, but I guess she kind of is the, the leader of hell, especially with the way this season ends. And this is when we finally get to that moment where Lucifer does indeed figure out what would be good for God's retirement, and that is bringing, or should I say, initially sending Gabriel, because she can send a message anywhere, to Mother's Universe, 
while she was there, she also got the blade that he chucked in with her. So she comes back. It was brilliant seeing Trisha uh, help her again, re reprise her role. We also found out little tidbits that her, her universe has centaurs in it. So I have no idea what she's up to. And in this very moment, you know, when they decided that they are, like literally as of this moment, they just, unless it was all a part of the plan, this is the thing. If not though, in this very moment, they just decided, oh, I'm leaving this universe and going to her universe with apparently no seeming way to get back. That's what they said. But if you're God, you're God. Like, God could surely get back. This is what I mean. There's blank spaces that I feel like, you know, you can't blame me for wanting to know those answers. Apparently, God himself can't get back. That's definitely what they got across there. He says that your mother spent a long time in my world. It's my turn to spend time in hers. And what I will say is this was so sudden. I'm not going to lie there. I mean, it is a fitting ending. It definitely is a fitting resolution to God's story this season. I just felt like with the way he just suddenly came across and he was just suddenly leaving, it just felt a bit rushed almost to me. But this scene led up for some spectacular moments. For example, that, that one moment that was so great is seeing Lucifer's need for his father still. The desperation and tears that was in Tom Ellis's face are just so foretelling at ironically as much as he wanted God to go this season. As he says himself, but you've only just got here. Can't you just stay around and annoy me a little bit longer? And then that led to that line from God saying, to Lucifer something that he's been wanting to tell him for a long time that he loves him and he cries and he says that he's very proud of the man he's become that moment killed me because we are seeing the devil the the, the angel that got cast out of heaven getting God's acceptance love it's all Lucifer's ever really wanted and I know and without getting too cheesy and cringy here it was a very good scene it was a scene that is to be remembered across the whole of the seasons because well, just the biblical tale of the rebellion and now they're reconciling with such acceptance. And Tom Ellis is acting, Dennis Hesbert's acting, God was just so on point here, so impactful. This is this is the essence, this is the stuff in scenes like this that makes this show, I think, so important to fans. Also, I love how they decided to chuck in how considerate Lucifer was. In that moment when he was getting his own father's love and acceptance, like... I think Amenadiel would like to hear that as well. Now, God did say that's already happened when they were playing golf. But just the fact that Lucifer thought of Amenadiel saying, you know, I know you're saying this to me, but I think he would like to hear that as well. It's just so thoughtful. <laughs> that's when the interesting moment happens. They say, Dad, wait, you forgot to name your successor. And he says, it's not up to me anymore. You'll figure it out. And then he's like, back to your mysterious ways already. And that's when he says, all a part of my plan. And then Lucifer's like, plan? And it, and he's like, wait, how much of this was your plan? And that's when he's like, hee hee hee. And then he like walks through the white light into her universe. So I wrote here, very glad they added that in. It annoys me, but it does obviously toy with the whole, this whole thing. Everything we've seen being a part of God's plan. So I've already said enough there. I just thought I would read out that scene word for word for what they said. You know, oh, it's all a part of my plan. How much of this? Was your plan inquisitively asking that? No answer given. So what is your what are your thoughts on that? I get what they were doing with how that toys with us, but I think it does also open up a few things to be questioned still, and even more questions being raised from that. But it, it maybe they still wanted to do it because it does make you think, regardless. Other than that, guys, for this episode, we have Chloe deciding to quit the LAPD, mirroring the relationship of her parents to be the more supportive one to Lucifer, possibly being God. And I really did feel like, okay, like maybe this is how it was going to end this season, because as we can't forget, season five was going to be the end so without the finale rewrite was this one of the original scripted narratives where she was gonna maybe as some people thought sit on the side and you know with with lucifer being god but the only reason why i've never subscribed to that is what i've said what about trixie so it's like i i'm dying for the showrunners after all of this is said and done i think we're gonna have to wait that long what was the original ending now other than that michael was getting supporters they learned that michael was really trying to become god now remy comes back to lucifer saying i may not like you but i hate michael more <laughs> and that was just hilarious it's like a good tagline or whatever for his campaign poster and then, um, yeah, we're on to episode 15. Is this really how it's going to end? Now, as for episode 15, 
This is where like a lot of the sweeping up was kind of done, getting prepared for that final moment. Ella's going mental at Lucifer and Chloe and the prospect of them leaving the LAPD. I don't think that will properly change. I think, you know, this will come into my speculation, obviously, when, you know, talking about the end of this season and how this will move forward but i still feel like they're going to be in the lapd moving forward when lucifer may be god but we'll get into that now i love how i don't know if many people picked this up on the case that they were on in this penultimate episode fox cancelled lucifer as we know so when they were going to see that mystic or fortune teller whatever you want to call her they said where were you last night and she was like giving a reading to a programming exec and then, like, the acting and the face and everything and pauses a programming exec at Fox. And then Lucifer is literally just like, oh, good luck with that. So, obviously, that's them jabbing at, you know, Fox's cancer. I just thought that was brilliant because, yeah, screw you, Fox, for doing that. But, of course, what I really just want to talk about in this, this episode, like, screw everything else, is Daniel. Dan's death. Man, like, no, no, no. Dan dying in Chloe's arms was just heartbreaking. We had the scene with Trixie. That part just destroyed me. She was saying to Lucifer, you don't lie. You know, you'll tell me where dad is or the truth. And she, he was just like, oh, dear, sweet child. I can't. Like, those moments just crushed me. If you would have asked me, is Dan going to die this season? I think I've even said in a predictions video before I thought Dan would probably die. The only reason I think that that might not happen is because we've now got another season after this. So I would have thought that maybe they would bench that. But that still doesn't mean that Dan is gone. Because obviously what happens with Dan dying after the heartbreaking funeral and, and whatnot with that. But Dan, as I said, he is in hell. And that's, you know, Lucifer's very frustrated. He announces he's going to war and all of that. We had Maze and Lucifer completely clear up house and get revenge on the... The murderers, if you will, and notice how it was Chuck from Supernatural. I believe they spared him as well. We didn't actually see him die. They just seemed to invoke the fear of God into him when whatever Lucifer whispered in his ear. That was like a nice touch that leaves the fans wondering what was really going on there. Because I'm pretty certain, unless I'm wrong, he didn't die. He, we just saw him get absolutely terrified. So I think they'd rather have him live in absolute... I don't know, psychosis or something rather than an easy quick death. But back onto the main point before I tangent about something else. I think this isn't the last we're seeing of Dan. I think the unjust aspects of Dan being nervous about going to hell and then, you know, the, the guilt aspects that was really heavily focused upon when he was even alive as he was exploring the celestial kind of law himself. And then he still ends up in hell. I think next season, especially with Lucifer having the power of God, I think Kevin Alejandro, whether if he comes back alive or not, it doesn't really matter with what I'm talking about now. I still expect to see him, whether that's in hell, whether he gets out of hell, doesn't come back to earth, especially because we've had the funeral. I think that's very important to bear in mind. We've had the funeral. People attended the funeral. I don't think he's going to be walking around in his body. I think the goal will be to get him from hell to heaven. And that's how we will maybe see Kevin Alejandro next season, reprising his role as Detective Douche and Dan. Now you may say this might take away from the sadness of his death, but not really. I still wouldn't put it past the show to give him a nicer kind of ending. So it's tragic at first, you worry about the character, or the characters worry about the character being in hell. But next season, it's going to kind of come full circle maybe when they get him to heaven. At least that's what I'm thinking, especially with the way obviously this ended oh yeah and before i forget the guy that ella was introduced to carol i believe Corbey, carol Corbey, the guy that dan was trying to set her up with i mean i this may be a random shot in the dark but that sounds like a little bit of predictable kind of end game for ella she, for one she's kind of going for the seemingly stand-up guy who may not have like a bad streak that she's usually attracted to but yeah i can see them getting into a relationship the next season and that kind of being the end game for her. I could be wrong, but that definitely wasn't set up for no reason. But this leads us to the finale, guys. The finale, finally we could talk about the ending. So Michael initially offers Lucifer hell whilst he gets heaven. And he admits that he told the people to kill Dan, which is just dumb. Uh, I don't blame Lucifer for going mad in that moment. The vote is being held on Earth because, well, as we know, Lucifer would burn up in heaven. Well, the, the only thing I have a little bit of an issue about this is, you know, like, I get it. Lucifer was cast out of heaven, but 
why does this still apply if he goes back to heaven he gets incinerated or you know or imploding kind of from the inside out like self-combusting almost because you would have thought you know after him and god reconciled then why wouldn't he be welcome home I, I don't know it's one of those things that is it's not an oversight it just wasn't referenced and i suppose when you think about it it doesn't just make it doesn't really make sense if all is good between him and god do you know what i mean I suppose you could argue since he went through the gateway he didn't have time to just click his fingers but i don't know things like that beg the question so to speak we had remy flying down this is another thing which i wasn't a massive fan of because she flew down and she died so in my spoiler free review i was like as much as i really enjoyed this finale um, it, the fact that it was a finale rewrite, I feel like it, it, it was quite rushed. The things that, like this, for example, Remy flying down, being dead, I didn't feel like Lucifer was remotely upset. I mean, obviously he was upset, but like his literal sister just died. I know people can argue, but you know, he doesn't always see his other siblings as much. But do you know what I mean? I feel like Amenadil, when he found out, he was instantly in tears almost, but... Do you see what I'm trying to convey? They didn't have the time to really be like, oh, let's be sad about Remy now because she's dead. We need to get on with things. It's not a massive criticism. It's just I feel like something that was kind of swept to the side for the for the convenience of getting on with everything else they had to do to set up the next season. But let, let's, you know, bypass to the vote. This, this was pretty funny, pretty cool. Chloe's melted down demon blade that Maze gave to her, you know, put the bullets in the gun so she was kind of ready. Lucifer takes the piss out of what Michael was wearing. This was brilliant. What is winter coming or something? A nice little Game of Thrones reference. And as I said, some comedy in this moment. If it was any other show than this, as I said, it doesn't always take itself so seriously. It wouldn't fit. It'd be way too cheese. It'd break all kinds of different things. But this is Lucifer, so that's why it really works. It was hilarious when they started dancing. And I think we have Jed Keel, or whatever his freaking name was, getting involved in that. And it was cool how he was the first angel to come over as well. Because Lucifer had told him that he wants to become God out of love, really. Rather than just for selfish motivations. To be honest, I think, you know, all of the angels are scumbags. Because after what I just said there, like, that really should make all the other angels angels come across especially if like two or three angels already went over i think it was two and especially the one or the angel of righteousness or whatever went over you would have thought the other ones who were only serving michael out of fear would have gone but they didn't i mean obviously they made a joke out of that with lucifer saying i thought this was going to be a whole thing um but it's true it, it arguably should have been like i don't get why you would stay under michael's thumb knowing that he murdered one of your brethren or should i say sister do you know what i mean i feel like there's quite a few holes there that it's not so real like why would you stay there when you have the opportunity to all go to lucifer's side i mean obviously it's because they had other ideas in mind for closing this episode. We had Maze arrive, she was speaking in Lilim, I believe the subtitle said, basically like hell language with her little demon army. And Chloe just shoots two angels as well. We have to just believe that those are flesh wounds because otherwise she would have literally just murdered two angels. That doesn't really get answered and I mean, I can't remember seeing them, like, because obviously they got shot. Did they just float down and like were standing there again? Somebody maybe can remind me of that, otherwise... We're just gonna have to forget about that one, but I'm just putting it down to flesh wounds because, I mean, really, you gotta kill two angels. Now we had Lucifer versus Michael. I thought this was pretty cool. I mean, obviously, if this was like a comic book level angel clash, this would <laughs> this would destroy the earth almost, not just having it in a little LA Coliseum. But obviously, Lucifer's quite a different adaptation. So with what they did, I thought it was pretty awesome, considering that's two Tom Ellis's, and I thought the face tracking and whatever they did there to make them fight was very immaculately done. Like I couldn't put Personally, to me, notice any bad, you know, face tracking with the fact that they ha would have to put Tom Ellis's face on someone else. And we even had Azriel arrive, the Angel of Death, and she says, I'm sorry, Lou. Michael stabs Chloe with the broken stuff, and unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to say it, for me, I didn't... I wasn't really taken back by this moment. I was taken back by Tom Ellis being destroyed and going mental. Obviously, Lucifer, but I felt like... It, it, you knew it wasn't gonna last more than a couple of minutes and and ironically it didn't do you know what i mean it was it, it was over before like she even almost even died do you know what i'm trying to say there i just felt like that was a subject again because of rushing i'm not trying to rain on the parade i just feel like the finale was rushed so moments like this you knew not to take too seriously at least that was my subjective experience but i do still stand by what i'm saying with how there was a lot to be crammed into this final episode with this rewrite that happened and you know it was still very entertaining, just not the most airtight in terms of 
pacing. Let me put it that way. Now Lucifer goes absolutely crazy. He goes up to heaven all while Chloe obviously renounced her guilt so she didn't end up in hell. And this is the first time Lucifer has been in heaven since the rebellion. So this was pretty awesome. And shout out to the people who thought that this scene was maybe a flashback to heaven. I mean, it wasn't a flashback, but it was a heaven scene. I remember specifically people commenting about that when I did my trailer breakdown, so well done there. Chloe is with her dad. Meanwhile, we have Lucifer with the guy who was in that hell loop that one episode, and he's actually the first human to um, achieve you know, accepting the guilt and then bypassing hell to go to heaven. Which is really awesome. And, and Lucifer is only surviving there due to Lilith's immortality protecting him through the ring. I thought that was a nice thing to chuck in. And I know it sounds like I'm glossing over, and, and I am, because I want to get to the main bits and pieces. But he finds Chloe. It seems I don't know how much of a big fan I am, just in general, of the concept of when you're in heaven. Like, it's, Chloe is, like, under this spell almost. Like, she doesn't think about Trixie. She doesn't think about the things that really grounded her to Earth. Just because she was, like, as soon as she realized, oh, yeah, like, you know, I have Trixie then, and my friends have these It's like, but when you're in heaven, it's like you're in a daze of, like, not caring. But this moment, it, it was still really, I could get into it, like, Lucifer took the ring off because he wanted to give it to Chloe. There's not enough juice, so to speak, to make the trip for both of them, and in that moment, as he was self-combusting, imploding, if you will, um, he said, I love you. And that, that was, you know, you know, to get a bit cheesy, it was a really nice way of doing it. I just wish it wasn't amongst so much stuff happening a million miles per hour. I feel like this would have been a, this episode would have been much better served over a two-part finale, so to speak. I know that would have given us 17 episodes, and I like 16, but I feel like this finale needed it. And then this is another unanswered thing that could be addressed next season, because obviously he was full we knew in that moment dying. I mean, at the end of the day, he was, he was, cracking from the inside out of his vessel being in heaven but like how did he survive was that god is it because he ascended to godhood but how does one ascend to godhood without a stamp or like the you know the mullet hitting the table it's like what made him survive like he he, he self-combusted and died for all intents and purposes but he didn't we don't really know I mean, you could say it's God, but he's in another universe. But I have an argument that just because you're in another universe, this is the God of all gods and creation. So, like, did he have something to do with this? This is the thing that I think there's a lot of floating things in the air that comes with introducing the peak of divinity into a season of Lucifer. I absolutely loved Chloe wrecking Michael with the strength of an angel, <laughs> absolutely battering him. But anyway, notice how when Lucifer arrives, when he says detective, it had that god echo effect. I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong about that. So like, detective, it was... <laughs> I feel like there's a very subtle clue there. I mean, it's kind of obvious with the ending of the show that he's meant to be the one all the angels worship now and he's therefore kind of God. But when he said it, it had that kind of God kind of echo to it. And Lucifer cuts off Michael's wings, saying that Michael does indeed deserve another chance. Everyone bows to Lucifer. And I and, and that's really it. Like, you know, he, he raises the blade and he's like, and there's a little bit of a, you know, kind of funny moment because he's like, oh dear. I can't remember what he says, but obviously the imagery looks with the way he's kind of under that archway and stuff. And, even even Michael bows to him. I still refuse to believe that Michael will be... I mean, I think for the story, he will be maybe good next season. But, like, knowing him, I don't think he'd change just like that. But regardless, regardless, how did he survive? So th this is the thing moving forward. It, it does set up a good story for season six. Now he is actually going to be the ruler. All of heaven is going to be at his beck and call, so to speak. I'm not saying he's gonna be like, do this, do that, do this, but that's gonna be a very interesting season for him and Chloe actually having to navigate that moving forward. Now, the explained aspect of this is, is like, obviously he is God now. I think you can all gather that, um, but there is still questions being raised. What actually ascends him to Godhood? Because when the angels kind of, it may, they did say maybe it has to be unanimous, but even then, does this make this unanimous? I'm pretty sure Michael would have something to say about that. So what I'm trying to pose there is where he was like, God, it's like it's not like there was a flash, as he said, that imbued him with the powers. And now just because obviously Lucifer's got the upper hand and he is seemingly, I guess, gone to godhood, somehow survived being in heaven and self-imploding. What actually gives him the powers? Because before we saw God with Charlie's little rattle thing and he actually got imbued with his powers again. What does that mean for Lucifer now? Like... Is he going to have that? Or is he going to have to be God just through chain of command? Not actually being omniscient and omni, all the omnis, as Lucifer says. Because we can't forget that you actually have to have the power. And God is gone now. So do you see what I mean? There's still big questions there. But we do have a very good idea of where things are going. And as I said, as for next season, I think that now 
Lucifer is going to be looked up to by all the angels. Whether he actually has the powers of God or not will we'll kind of create a new pathway for getting Dan out of hell. I just refuse to believe for now at least that Kevin Alejandro, you know, I think he will appear for an episode or two, albeit not in his vessel on earth. It's just going up to heaven. Um, looking forward to Lucifer navigating being the leader of heaven. So are we going to see more of the Silver City rather than just the little garden area that we saw? So overall, that was a big Lucifer ramble session, but I, th I think I've got everything out. It's been an incredibly long video, but overall, I would say that I enjoyed season five, part two, five B, whatever you want to call it, more than the first half. I think, as I keep saying, that is because the material they had to work with is something that I think we would have liked to have seen all, all along. Not saying that it should have been there earlier, but when you have God, blah, 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 in it, it's like, okay, sign me up, sign me up. So it was so fascinating. The finale was a bit rushed, but understandably so, because they were subject to a rewrite to continue the season moving forward, but I am happy that they're going into a new season with the premise looking like it will stand for all the episodes that they want to do. It's not milking it or it's not like dragging it out because this is relevant story but what i will say is that the story we do have to go forward with with lucifer navigating godhood with chloe and this that and the other it, you do see an ending in sight i feel like with whatever happens there you can see how it's going to fade out into the sunset now they we don't need like i feel like what can we do beyond now god being in it lucifer being god or whatever now I feel like you only kind of sizzle out in a good way from here on out. But ladies and gentlemen, what did you think of it? I would love to know your thoughts, especially if you got to this part of the video. If you got to this part of the video, then type down in the comment section, along with whatever comment you were going to post anyway, just to prove that you got to this part. Hashtag Lucy is dear old dad. And other than that, you can help me out by leaving a like on this video and sharing it. It really, really does help out. Subscribe for more videos like this. I'll be doing a whole separate predictions video and whatnot sometime soon. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you Lucy fans in the next video. Goodbye.